glory, glory be to God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glory and honor be to your holy name. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, I am that I am. Lily of the Valley, we bless your holy name. We give you all the praises. We give you all the honor and all the adoration unto you, Lord. Thank you, immortal God. Thank you, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, we exalt you. We give you praise, we give you adoration. Good morning, sir. The blessed be thy holy name, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord of God. I am the man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your holy name. Amen. Father, we worship you. We say great to your great Lord. We worship your holy name. We say thank you for your love, for your protection over us, for your guidance. What I would say, you're good, you're kind, you're a good God, you're a loving Father. We bless your holy name. We say great is thy faithfulness, great is thy name, O Lord. Father, we worship you. We give you honor, we give you heart, the worship. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Yes, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, you reign. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus, greatly to be praised. Yes, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Father, you are Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're so great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Lord, you are worthy and you're greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're so great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We say thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Thank you. Yes, you are great. Glory to us in the holiness. We are praise. praises, always doing wonders. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank Father, you, Lord. we worship you. We give you all the... Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You the are the great I am. Hallelujah. 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 You are the mighty, mighty God. Yes, you Lord, are the, the great, great I am. Oh, yes, yes Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. 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 You are 
are the King of Kings, the great I am. Oh, Jesus, Alleluia. Alleluia. Yes, Lord. Just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say, I love you, you are everything to me and I exalt your hope. I exalt your hope, leaning. I exalt your hope, Oh Lord, I oh, will worship you, my shanty bush. Sing it one more time, for my question, bush. I just want to praise Lord. Yes, Lord. I my eyes to say, I love you. I have everything. To me, and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I Exalt your holy name, oh Lord. If you know God is everything to you, I want you to it's worship Him this morning. Father, we want to be your everything to me. Lord, I love you. I give you praise. Lord, I return all the exaltation unto you. Lord, I love 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 you. I we say, you bless and be that one. Thank you for who you are in our life. Thank you for your kindness in our life. For your mercy in our life. For your goodness in our life. Thank you for your mercy in our life. Thank you for your mercy of freedom. My joy is forever. Lord, we for your goodness. Thank you for loving us for who you are in our life. Lord, we give you all the things you've been doing in our life. Who you are. Yes, Lord. I worship you. Yes, Lord. For who you are, I exalt your name. For you are God by yourself. Oh, you are God by yourself. For who you are, Lord. For who you are. I was be you for who you are, Jesus, for who you are. I praise your name for you are God of yourself. Oh, you are God of yourself. Father, we worship you for who you are in our life, in our family, in our home, in our church. We you. We exalt you. By yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for sacrificing your son for us. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. There is no comparison to you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are exalted. 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 Who you are in our life, who you are in our life, your God, I worship you for what you have. Thank you for your faithfulness, thank you for your loving kindness, Jesus. 
today in the mighty name of Jesus that our hearts will be fertile ground to make transformable transformable things unto the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus that that transformation we, we generated from our hearts this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the word of God will come to life in every situation this morning and it will transform every act that's been idle every heart that's been sealed every heart that the enemy want to turn to his turning heart this morning we declare we decree upon their heart uh, that they become the heart of flesh uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the word of God will be established in every relationship this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Could there be any relationship that are going through turmoil this moment? Father, we pray that your mighty end will touch this relationship this morning and your power will we, 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 we immerse into this relationship and there will be a transformation in every relationship this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because you will be glorified in our way, in our midst this morning and you'll be glorified in every heart this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ we have prayed amen 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 good morning everybody welcome again today is the 13th day of the month of september we give god praise we give him honor adoration for another beautiful day that he has enabled us to see um not to take more of our time because uh, we like some experienced contributor this morning i would like to hear testimony share this morning in reference to this relationship because when it comes to relationship uh if we don't get it right um it, it can it can detour and mess up everything that god's plan for our life. So we want to make sure that we are we are within the boundary of what God is doing. And I think God was preparing us like the whole last week uh, that, 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 that he was talking to us about depression because sometimes mm -hmm. our relationship has brought us into that place of isolation that has caused depression in what we do. And we are not able to see God clearly. And that's why the message yesterday that uh, how do we deal with a troubled time and the means, how do we deal with issues that are actually happening around us and knowing that God is in it. How do we deal with them? And this morning, we want to look at this critically. And I pray this morning that God will minister to our heart. God will use the mouth of everyone that we contribute this morning to speak life to wherever there is a storm, to speak peace wherever there is a storm, to speak life to wherever there is, there is, there is, a, there is a sickness or there is death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and to speak light into where darkness is being ruled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Does your love have staying power? Does your love have staying power? That is the title this morning. And I will display it so we can all go through this. I've shared it on the WhatsApp group and uh, I've shared it even on the Facebook, on Twitter, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the, what do you call it? On all of the platforms. So if you're looking for it, they're there. Go and follow up on it and uh, read as we read along and we can get all the contribution that we can get from it. And God will help us to have an understanding of what he's talking to us about sustaining a loving power. Sustaining a love that comes with power. Because sometimes most of our love do not have genuity with it. Most of our love do not have power behind it. They are all self-centered. And this morning, God is going to help us to know that love in God, it's, it's a loving others. 
when you love God, your love must be an expression to others. And God will take us there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our text this morning is found in the book of 1 John chapter 4. Uh, verse 7 is what we're using. But I want to read verse mm. 7 to verse, verse, uh, verse 12. So we can have it clear. We can go along with it as we're reading it. Uh, it's uh, 1, 1 John chapter 4 from verse 7. I will read to 10. It said, dear friends, this is a new international version that I'm reading this morning. So if you have your Bible, if you want to read along, new international version is what I'm reading. Whatever version you're reading, it's going to be the same word of God that come. First John chapter four from verse seven. It said, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Yes, Every, everyone who loves has been born of God and know God. That's that last word, know God, know God, because when you love God, that means you know God. Then when you love God, you will be able to translate what you know about God onto others. Whoever does not love does not know God. So because most of the time our love have an attachment to it, has a condition to it, have a respect, has something to get back to it. When we say we're giving love, there's an expectation for our love. There is a, there is no unconditional love anymore. There is a condition attached to the love that we have and that love is not from God let me repeat that a love that have a condition attached to it it is not from God it is a love that we perish it is a love that self-centered it is a love that will not sustain power it doesn't have a, a love that stay in power so he said whoever does not love does not love God because God is love there is this is how God shows his love among us he sent is one and only begotten son into the world that we might be what well, through is through him through him my live through him this is love are you willing to give up everything that you have for the love of others are you willing to give up everything that god has put into it to others because you receive it from god you don't keep it to yourself you're ready to use it for god are you ready to do that because god did the same thing his only begotten son is send him to the world so that he can he can save us that is what love is about and he sent his own son his son as an what? Atoning sacrifice. Atoning sacrifice for our sin. So verse 11 said, dear friend, since God so loved us, we ought to what? Love one another. If you're not loving her, anybody else unconditionally, then you need to question your love. When you don't love anybody unconditionally, you need to question your love. I will say it again. If you don't love anybody unconditionally, that because I'm not receiving, I'm not giving, then check yourself. Find out if God really truly lives in you. Because human being love is if you don't give, I don't get. If I don't get, you don't give. Mm -hmm. That is human. But God is not the same. So God loves is a love that gives unconditionally and that is the reason why he still sustained this power because he keep on pouring himself out to us every day so i will read the outline this morning i will read the outline this morning so we can we can get contribution this morning please don't share out this morning everybody don't keep out open your mind up and ask god to continue to minister to all to you as we speak this morning so that you can contribute life to somebody's life we read that first John chapter four, verse seven, love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and know God. Are you been born of God and do you really know God? Because if you don't know God, then you're not born of him, then you don't have any genuine to your love for one another. We need to look at that critically. And I read out this morning, so when we watch celebrity move through multiple marriages and up from one relationship to another, it reminds us that we cannot charismatically, you know, we cannot do have any charisma without character. We cannot have charisma without talent, uh, talent without trustworthy, skill without staying power, skill without staying power, a cartoon in a magazine show a couple standing before a minister during their wedding ceremony. The minister looking at the bride said, this correct response is, I do, not it's what he tried. Many of the time, we go into a relationship because of what we want to get. 
We are not going into that relationship because of what God has given, because of the love that we have. We are now turning relationship into trade by butter, and that is not a genuine love in that. When we start looking at ourselves, and I want us to look critically into our heart today, that the relationship that I built today, what is my purpose in it? Why am I in it? Is it in it? Because God loves me. Because I'm sharing my love that God has given me with somebody, or I have an ulterior motive. Question that you will have to ask yourself. It's not if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, I'm not going to do it. If it's not working for me, I'm going to get out. If it's not conducive, it's not going to work. If I don't get what I want, I'm going to deal with this. If it doesn't, if it's inconvenient to me, I'm not going to stay with it. If it's deterring my, my career opportunity, I'm going to run away. If it's going to get in the way of my plan, it's not going to work. No, where is love? When you, it's only you that you see yourself in the relationship. You don't see others in the relationship or you don't even see God. Remember what God said, if you don't have, you don't know God, you will not be able to express God loves. Because you will only see yourself. But when you know God and you love, you know the love of God, you will not see yourself. You will see the other person in your life to make sure that you are able to take care of what God has given you, pass it on to the other. The correct response is not if it's worth it. Is it worth it? Try it. No, it's not. Love in a marriage and in any other relationship require unselfishness and commitment to on our part, commitment and unselfishness. It isn't about you when it comes to marriage. Bible say a man shall leave, uh, leave his father's and his mother and cling to his wife and they become one. So any time that you're hurting the other person, you're hurting yourself. Because if you think that you're getting away with it right now, down the line, you will find out that you missed out a lot of things that you could have done right from the beginning. When you get to the end, you already missed up all the opportunity that you have. Many have lost control of their relationship because they have not allowed God to minister through them. Relationship require unselfishness. It isn't about you. It isn't about you. And commitment to our path. What is your path? What is your role as a wife? What is your role as a husband? What is your role as a female, as a male in that relationship? What are you called to that relationship to do? Not what you are there in that relationship to get. Let me repeat that. Why are you in that relationship? Why are you in that relationship? Not in that relationship. What you should get is you are in that relationship to build together what God wants. What God wants, not what you want. Because when you decide to come together as one, you have invited God into it because the institution of marriage is owned by God, not by man. And contrary to popular opinion, it doesn't come easily and naturally to any of us. Love is other, love is other centered and self sacrifice. The truth of the matter is that yes, we are all selfish. That is the fact. We are all self centered. We are all self centered. Anybody that say, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't do that. No, no, let's check ourselves. We are all self centered in our own natural self. We care a little more about making sacrifice for others unless we are highly motivated and well rewarded. That's human nature. Don't get me wrong on that. We all want to get something from what we do. We want the result of what we do. We want to get it back from what we've, what we, what, what we have shared. We want that. That's our nature. That's why the Bible teaches us that one of the secrets of having an intimate relationship with someone else is having one with God. Clear your thoughts with God. Clear your relationship with God. Make sure that you are in line with what God wants you to do. And when you can clear that right, I can guarantee you that your relationship with others, God will intervene in it. Many of the time, we're trying to please people. We're trying to please each other. I'm trying to please my wife. I'm trying to please my husband at the expense of God. And we neglect God that we need to please so he can come into where that chaotic moment is and speak peace to it. We put God on the side and we isolate ourselves into that area. Say, oh, I got to do what my wife wants. I got to do what my husband wants. But what about what God wants? 
to love him with all your heart first before you can love somebody else unconditionally your love for god must be sound because you will no longer think about yourself anymore you must get a clear relationship with god must be paramount in anything that you do john the apostle writes love comes from god Love comes from God, like we just read in that book of uh, that first John. Love comes from God, seven and eight. Whoever does not love doesn't have God. It's not born of God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God himself is what? Love. You can't give what you don't have. If you have a relationship with God and you manage that well and God is in you, what you will spread out is love. And if you ask him to do it, God will download the kind of love into your heart. It will download that it's kind of love into your heart, a heart that we love unconditionally, a heart that we say, yeah, whether it's going well, I still love you. Whether it's going bad, I still love you. I will not put my interest before your interest, but I will put God's interest in ahead of you so I can have your interest at heart, just like God did his own as well. God can download that same love into your heart. Here's how he does it. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. That's how God downloads his love. And if you don't know how he downloads his love, open your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Because I know every one of us, we are one way or the other miss this we have looked at our interests at the expense of our partner our interests has overruled the interests of the people that god has placed in our heart in our life to be the helpmate because we have lost the focus on what god intend for us we have take all the things that we wanted and now trying to control everybody else about it god loves has been what pour out into our heart it's your heart accepting the love of god truly that's the question we want to ask ourselves is the death of christ on the cross have you accepted it as a genuine unconditional love that you don't deserve and you got it once you know that you have gotten that love in you and you have taken that love in you and that love has seated in your heart he said he poured through the holy spirit is the holy spirit controlling you or you are the flesh that's controlling the holy spirit and you come and pretend on your lips come out the word of god but in your heart is a dirt it's as dirty as it can be and you just have this evil thinking you have this evil notion you have this ungodly thoughts ungodly speech ungodly action that's coming through your mouth to your partner to your friends to people around you to your children to everybody around you and you think that god is in it no this kind of love grow as we mature in it many of us think that because we're maturing in our career, in our education, in our finances, in our status, in what we do. We think, yeah, we are okay. If you're growing outside, in your outside world and your inward is not growing, brethren, I'm telling you, you're, 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 on, a route, you're, you're on a wide road to, to, to a place of destruction. So go back, go back, go back. You might be growing on the outside. You might be getting money here. You might be getting everything breakthrough working for you because, because it's working out. You think it's your ability. You better go back and start letting the Holy Spirit mature you inward because when the inward is mature, when the storm come on the outside, it's inward that will be able to sustain it. The kind of love, this kind of love that we are talking about, that the Holy Spirit gives to us, that He pour in us, He matured gradually. It developed as we feed Him. How are you feeding Him? Are you feeding Him with the things of this world? Are you feeding Him with the enticement of this world? Are you feeding yourself with the, with the things that you see, with the people around you, with the negative things or the things that, that only fulfill the flesh, that we kill the spirit? Are you feeding that thing with the things that you think people are pumping you up? They're saying that, oh, 
you are great. Oh, you are great. You are this. You have achieved this. You have achieved that. Your education level is like this. Your material level is like this. Oh, you are getting paid six figure salary, or you get you get thousand of money in the bank account. All of those things, the trick of the devil to make you popped up. If you don't go back and mature the Holy Spirit in you to grow a true, genuine love in your heart, you will not be able to love anybody. You're calling a doom to what you're doing. So develop your relationship with God. Don't get anybody. And one thing, I'm going to digress for a minute. I'm going to digress for a minute. So please, pardon me with this. I'm going to digress for a minute. The enemy do not come. It doesn't intend for you to be happy. It doesn't intend for you to have joy. It didn't intend for you to have life. It came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the only way he does that is to put you in a place of isolation so that you can get away from everybody else that can help you, so that you can be away from everybody else that can speak life into your situation, so you can be in a place where it can control your mind, it can control your behavior, it can put you in a place where you do not have freedom, but Jesus Christ has come so that you can have life. If you are now in a relationship, that that relationship is putting you down, go and cry to God that God, please, Intervene. I need your true love in the heart of my partner, in the heart of whoever I'm dealing with. Let me enjoy that true love because it's that love that you'll be able to carry on. Bottom line, this kind of love stay in power. A love that only stay in power because of the things of material thing that you have. They don't stay in power. Money, it will come and go. Even life, your breath that you're breathing right now. You have it now. It could be tomorrow. It's gone. But why don't you ask for that life that lives forever? That love that breathes forever. That love that nobody else can compete with. It's a genuine love that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. That person will not die. That is the love we're talking about this morning. And I pray that God will take us out of isolation so that he can bring us close to him so we can love him like he expects us to love him. And that's all I want to say this morning. I will pause for a minute before I come back later on. Please contribute this morning about can your love sustain the power? Can your love sustain the power? Is the love you're sharing, can it stay in the power? Or is it going to just vanish out because it is controlled for your selfish reason? Thank you, Brian Mike. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Yeah, thank you very much this morning. Um, I have some questions. Yes, sir. Like, you know, um, that's for all of us. You know, because you were saying um, this morning um, some things came to my mind. And I was able to write most of it down. And my question is that, you know, um, that's for all of us. Because most of the time, we love people, even the husband and the wife, you know, when they're in a relationship. And most of the time, we, you love your, your partner because of what? you get from that person. That's the reason why you love that person. But the moment that person stops giving you what you, you love him for, then you stop. Most of the time, people come around you because they like, maybe they like the way you talk, maybe they like the way you dress, or maybe because of the position where you are on, that's that's their motive. They want to be part of that. So it's the same thing, you know, in relationship with God, with us. Most of the time, we, we, we come to God because of what we're receiving from God. Mm. We, it, because, oh, I want to be protection. I want protection. I want security. I want the Lord to, 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 to guide me. I, and I want the, the Lord to give me the wisdom, understanding. So everything is I, 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 I. You just want. But you actually love the Lord. That's the question right there. Can you love the Lord unconditionally? 
Can you love the Lord because it's not what he's giving you, but because you just want to worship him, you just want to glorify him. He want, you cannot breathe without the Lord. Can you actually do that? That's where the actually, that's where the love is. So, you know, we have to, um, if we look into the book of Mark, Mark 12, 29 to 31. In the book of Mark 12, 39 to 31. You know, when Jesus, uh, when they asked Jesus, what's the most important commandment? Which uh, commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus answered, the most important is here, O Israel, the Lord, our God. The Lord is one. Okay, am I reading this, the, the uh, right one? Yeah, you are there. And, uh, as they taught, as they taught, Jesus said, watch out for the teachers of the law. Uh, verse 39, let me read 39. And he, he has most important seat in the synagogue and the place of honor banquet. The devour, you want to, what are you looking for? Now, I'm looking for um, the most important uh, commandment of all, which is that love the Lord with all your heart, love with the Lord with all your soul and all your mind. You know, that's one. Then the second one, love your neighbors as you love that's yourself. That's their self. Because when you love the Lord with all your heart, when you love the Lord with all your souls, when you love with love with everything that you get, trust me, he will not see you going as straight as you don't. It don't, it don't intercept for you. He will not see you going in a bad way then where he will not correct you. And I will pray that the Lord will continue to help us as we in this relationship with him. Amen. Because it's not like, it's not going to be a relationship where it's just one way relationship. You can't be there in a relationship with God where it's just going to be one way. Where because of what you're getting from the Lord. You, you also have to give that relationship. You also have to build that relationship by loving him too. By following his commandments. By putting him first in everything. Because look into the, in, 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 in the life of Christ. When Christ came into this world, he didn't settle down for a second hand. When he, when he, when he was born, he didn't go, they didn't, he's not a prostitute that, 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 that gave birth to him. It was a virgin, a womb that nobody ever been in before. You see what I'm, where I'm going? Yeah. When he died, when he died, they didn't, they didn't go bury him in a second hand. In, in, in a tomb where they have buried someone before, it was a fresh tomb. When it, a donkey that he rode on, he didn't roll on on donkey that it's on that somebody like already um, be, be riding on. You know, everything he, he wanted best for himself. So we don't give him second thing. We don't just like you know love him like putting like second. We don't love our children more than the God. We don't love our job more than God. We don't love the thing that we do more than God, we have to put him first. Because when you put him first, everything else line. And we pray that the Lord will continue to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Mike. Thank you. Um, I think you, you were looking for Mark chapter 10, uh, chapter, yeah. chapter 12, verse 12, 29 to 31. Uh, loving the Lord with all your heart. I just posted it on the chat. So it, it's very important. Mm -hmm. What you just said is the nature of man that we, we, we give and take, we expect to give. One thing that I, I will share my personal life, I mean, every time that it, it comes to my relationship with my, with my wife, I think in the past, I've always looked for, okay, okay, what can I get from this one? But what I've learned, what I've trained myself is that um, I, I am not looking for something. What can I do? What, can, what, what will my wife need? What can I, I start looking for opportunity around my relationship that what it is that i can do what it is i can offer to continue to, to to grow my love for my wife what is it that i can offer to grow my the happiness of my wife the the the, 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 the comfort of my wife the, the the thing that can make my wife continue to love god more in me that is what i have started i have started to be doing that even if i don't get what i want from her what can i give back what can i give what can I give? What can I give? Are we thinking in that way? Or are we only thinking about what is what I want from him, what I want from her? I don't get it. And we start thinking like God is thinking that my child, what did they need today? I need to give them some so that they can have oxygen. 
I need to give them wind so they can have breath here. I need to give them jobs so they can have food on their table. I need to give them money so they can. Are we thinking the same way God is thinking about us? That God is looking at us, that we are his bride. He is our bridegroom. And he always constantly think about us, where we go, security of our life, expense of our life, how we go through things that is there for us. Are we thinking of our partner in that way? Or we are just thinking that, oh, when he gets home today, I'm going to ask him to wash the dishes. Or when he's on his way to work from home today, I, on our way to, uh, I'm going to wait for her until she gets I want her to cook me a bona and a good soup. And have you taken out the meat out of the refrigerator? Have you put the water on the stove? Have you prepared the way for her to be able to make that thing right? And when you are thinking about your thinking process, that is why we two come together and working together. Not you coming home and say, I've been waiting for you. I need to eat Amola today. And you flip the remote control. Come on now. God will help us in the name of Jesus. But when we are able to see how God looks at all, how God provides for us, how God cares for us, then we will understand how to care for one another. Because it only flows from him to us. And when it gets to us, the only way we can do the right thing is to flow it out. What are you getting from God? That is the question. What is your relationship with God? How good do you understand his love for you? How best do you understand how he cares for you? Because when you understand his care for you, you will understand how to care for others. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brad Mike. Anybody else this morning? No, we have some experienced people this morning. I don't want to call name. Praise God. Good Hello, morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Bridget. Welcome, man. Good morning, sir. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, if I, you, you, have, you have already breaking everything down, and uh, you know, <clears throat> you have always uh, emphasized the one thing that if you don't love God, you really cannot love others, you know. And uh, that is why I want to appreciate what uh, Brother Mike has said. You know, uh, because you know our relationship with God. The Lord Jesus Christ made it clear. He said when they were talking, asking him questions and all, and he said, "Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. You know, with all your strength. Mm -hmm. You know, and your neighbor as yourself." So, from the topic of today that we have just read you know, talk about loving, uh, love power, you know. So the uh, the Holy Spirit has shared his love in our heart. The Bible says God shared his love in our heart by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So the only way we can love, actually, it has to start with loving God. Because if you don't really love Christ, you really cannot love. You know, we because we have our flaws, we have our weaknesses, we have our limitations, the flesh is so powerful. So the only way we can bring the flesh under is because of our, of our relationship with Christ. You know that the Holy Spirit is giving to correct you, help you, you know, direct you, telling you this thing you are doing is not good. And you know you love God, you don't want to offend God. You don't want to offend God. So there's that moderating power in you moderating your activities, directing you. And because you don't want to offend the Lord Jesus, you succumb. Many of us, we are very hard. Naturally speaking, we are hard. But because we, we know the Lord, the Spirit of God is in us, we have the Spirit of Christ in us. We mellow down. We deliberately give up certain things that we will not have ordinarily give up, given up. We give up because of our love. We don't want to offend God. We want to make it. You want to make it to, 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 to heaven. You want to you want to be with him. You don't want to miss out. So, because you love Christ, you don't want to offend him. And that's what gives us the enablement to love our spouse, to love every other person. If you don't genuinely love God, you really can't love another person. And another thing I want to emphasize is, you know, God also really wants us to love him. Sometimes I ask myself, if I'm faced with threats, 
like somebody bring God to me, like what is happening in Nigeria, what is happening, happening in Afghanistan, what is happening all over the Middle East. And somebody comes to you and say, denounce Christ, renounce your relationship with Christ. If you don't deny him, I'm going to kill you right now. Have I loved God enough to be able to stand that? I ask myself that question every day. Do I, have I loved him enough not to deny him? I say, Lord, help me not to deny you. No matter the situation, if I'm being confronted, because the time that we are going into, they are going to be very tough. They are going to be very tough. So we must make sure that, you know, it's a command. It's not whether you like it or not. It, it, that, it has no place in the scheme of God. Just love unconditionally, as God has loved us. Love the unlovable. Even if a person does not deserve it, but because you remember that God loves you when you were in your sin, the Bible says that while we were here without strength, God died for the ungodly. Or conditionally, agape love. So the ability to also love the unlovable, the ability to love creation is put in us. God has put that love in us. The drug addicts, the prostitution, the prostitutes that come around us, all those people that come around the homeless one you see in the street of America, you see all over. How do you feel about them? They are drug that yes, but how do you feel about them? Because if you have that love of Christ, you, 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 you will weep in your heart. Sometimes I see some of these people, I, I, just, I just become sad. I, I look beyond them. I see Satan walk. You know, Pastor was talking about the fact that Satan has come to steal, to kill, to destroy. That is his work. But how do can we help these people? Somebody you are driving, somebody comes to you, he carries a, a banner in his hand, whatever they carry. You know, do you just despise the person? Do you look at you know, even though when you know it's a drug addict, how do you handle things like that? Can you embrace that person? Embrace, give the person, if you have the opportunity to embrace the person, you, you, give, you, give, you give whatever you can give to that person, then you now preach the gospel to that person. One day, a, a preacher was, was talking about if how somebody made, he wasn't even having any money. He was frustrated, he was passing, you know, having some experiences that, that we can say, you know, frustration, you know, it's a man of God. He, they, they, this person just came to him in the hotel was trying to look for where to pass the night. A person came to him was say, please, please, can you help me? Can you help me look at the person? He, 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 he walked away. Ha! He said, love well up in his heart. He came to the person and he breathed. The person said, but I'm dirty. You are embracing it. Yes. He See, I was weeping. I was eating. I dropped my food. I was weeping. Can I love like that? These are some of the things we must ask ourselves. You know, so God wants us to show this love. When we are able to really manifest this love, my brethren, oh, we are up there. God will be committed to us in every way because we must love the unlovable. We must love the sinners. Even those who are even persecuted Christians, know, do we pray that they should die? That we say, oh, God, kill them, destroy them. <laughs> or what, what, how do we do? What, what do we do? These are some of the things. So, God is love. God is love. God wants us to love. So God will grant us that help. Amen. Will grant us that grace and Amen. strength Amen. to love, to just love unconditionally. It is not easy, my brethren, but we we'll continue to ask God for grace and God will grant it to us in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Thank you very, very much. You know, it's not easy to love, like you say, like God, but God has given us the Holy Spirit. You remember the story that Jesus was telling Peter, asking Peter a question. He asked him three times, do you love me? Peter said, you know, Lord, I love you. He said, do you love me? He said, yes, I know. You know I love you. And, uh, you know, like my sister said, you have a situation going on in Nigeria, you're going on in Afghanistan, that people are denying God because of their understanding of who God is, because they're afraid of death. And listen to Peter. Peter said, I love Jesus. He was with Jesus every day since he was called. But he still did not know him. 
And the day Jesus was arrested, what did he do? He denied God. And God know that. And that's the reason why he has to send the Holy Spirit to us. What we just read today, God has given us in that book of Romans, Roman that we read, God has given us that spirit to help us, to help us, Romans 5.5, 5, that God has compelled us with that Holy Spirit to be able to love like him. Because he knew if we are going to try to love in our flesh, we don't have the capability. We don't have the strength. We will deny him. We will even put ourselves in front of loving God. If they come today and say, yeah, die for Christ. Do you think if I don't have the Holy Spirit, you think I would be able to die for Christ? I would deny it. But that's why God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to submit to him. So that when we submit to the Holy Spirit in us, the power to overcome every challenge is that we have that selfless attitude. That attitude that says, oh, it isn't about me. It's for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. We will have that, that we will not think about ourselves alone anymore, but rather we will think about others so that they can gain Christ, so that they can gain what we have, so that they can see what we have and start enjoying what we have because that is all that makes us, nothing else make us, make God happy than to see us living a loving life to one another. If you don't love like Christ loves you, that you are loving to expect something in return, then check because that love will not sustain power. That love will not last in power because that love will only be looking for, asking for, and that love will become a beggar. The love of God is not a beggar. The love of God is a giver. That is the difference between the love that sustains power than the love that loses power. The love that sustains power is a love that is spread out. It is love that is given genuinely without respecting anything in return. Because the more you give, the more of that love is poured upon you. And God will help us to get there by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we need to activate the power of the Holy Spirit in our life so we can actually start loving. Because Peter did not know that Jesus Christ, even though he saw the miracle he performed, many of us experienced God in numerous ways, in many ways, but we still did not have the tendency, the ability to love like he loves us, to die for us. Are you willing to die for your partner? Are you willing to love your partner even as Christ loves the church? That is the love that can sustain power. That is the love that can last for eternity. It is not a love of give and take. It's a love of giving and giving and giving because you're already taken from the Lord. And as you're taken from the Lord, you should be pouring it out. You should be pushing it out. So when you build your relationship with God, God will pour his love upon you and you will pour your love upon others. That is the way it works. Because if you don't receive love from God, you will not be able to give love. You will give hatred. You will give because you're on the world. And what the devil is giving you is on this world. And what is giving you is evil. It's bad thing. It's destruction. It's you putting people down so you can go on the top. It's you uh, suppressing people so you can be shining. It's you to... to, to Learn your power over other people so they can be pressing you as the one that have power. That is the power of the devil. But to the Lord, is humbling yourself in the arm of God and God start pouring himself in you and you humble yourself. Through your humility, God will spread himself into the heart of people. Through your humility to God, God will spread his power upon the life of other people. Because you're humble before the, the Lord, the Lord will spread his authority through you to others. And that is how the love of God operates submitting to God, then God flow through you. I mean, the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to give you an invitation because you don't even, you can, your power will not be sustainable when the challenge of life comes, when the temptation of life comes, your power that you have will not be sustainable because you're only loving yourself. Just ask him, Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. I know you died for me and I know you love me. I confess you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Come and dwell in my heart and I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord over my life. If you say that prayer, look for a Bible praying church, believing church. Tell them you just become born again. They will walk with you and show you how to start loving God first. Then your love to others will be genuine. It will not be counterfeit love. 
It will not be a love of, of, of conditional. It will be an unconditional love without you expecting anything from them. Or if you can find a church, look for RCCG on your phone or on the internet, rccg.org. You will find the redeemed Christian Church of God near you. Tell the pastor you just became born again, and they will walk with you, that you will start sharing unconditional love to people around you. The rest of us, we should just ask God that God help us, help me to be able to love you unconditionally, to love you unconditionally, because we have turned God to our ATM machine. We have turned God to our doctor. We have turned God to our pro to, to our provider. We've turned him to, oh, when I need things is when I call him. Let's ask him that, Lord, let me love you genuinely, just loving you for who you are, because the song we, the songwriter, the song that we sang this morning, for who you are is why we come to you. For who you are, that's why we come to you, because you are the glorious God. You are the majestic God. You sit in the throne of heaven. You use the earth as your footstool. You are the strategic specialist. You are the you are the, the omnipotent God. You are the omniscience God. You are the omnipresence God. You are the one that said, let there be light and there was light. It is your word that helps us to establish the heaven. It is your word that helps establish the earth. It is your word that used the, 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 the let there be light and there was light. It is your word that separate the firmament from the from the earth and separate the water from the from, 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 from the land. It is you that control the affairs of men. It is you that give us oxygen. It is because of that that we love you. It is because of your majestic power. It is because of who you are that you reign supremely because you're mighty God, because you're Prince of Peace, because you're the Lord of Lords, because you're the everlasting Father. You are the Savior of the world. You are our Redeemer. You are our Lover. You are our Savior. You are our Fortress. You are our Majestic God. You are the Lord that reign over the affairs of every man. You are the Jehovah Rapha. You are the Jehovah Tikeno. You are the Jehovah Mekadesh. You are the Jehovah Hel Shaddai. We give you praise to this morning. We give you honor this morning. As we continue the rest of our day, we ask that you will take absolute control. Let your love, let it richly dwell in us. Holy Spirit, we surrender everything into your hand. Give us our deliberate today. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And at the end of the day, we will come back to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you adoration, to give you all the praises, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Amen. rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Anybody have anything else to say before we share the grace? Got three more minutes. Hallelujah. Anybody have anything else to say? Okay, if you don't have anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pra again. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. yeah. Um, oh, they're all almost said. Um, I was trying to let us know that. The another synonymous um, word to that uh, the, uh, the word we are talking about love today is care. Care is the ultimate. Mm. When you when you care, you will not be selfish. Mm. When you care, you will love God because the the foundation of our, our 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 love is just loving God. Because when you have the fear of God, the beginning you'll be able to have a relationship everywhere. You'll be able to have a, a, a caring spirit before others. Because one, when you keep that selfishness in you, the moment you remove selfishness from your life, you'll be able to continue to like <clears throat> give, yes. open up, yes. give, open yes. up to yes. others. Yes. But once you have that selfishness in you, you will not grow. It will not let you, it will, not, it will tie you down. It will not let you release that um, 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 uh, ability to give, ability to share, ability to care. So that is one side of it. And from our reading today, we are talking about like um, celebrities who are um, hopping into marriages and hopping out from marriages. Yes, because one, the foundation of their marriages is not um, uh, built on love. Mm -hmm. Some of them were, were built uh, on fame. Some of them are built on uh, money, monetary um, 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 positions. So these are the things. There is no their, their relationship we are not initially built on love, so it cannot stay, it cannot hold. So that is one. And uh, if you look at the um, America here we are today, you see most of the relationship don't hold because one, there is no love. People don't care. They don't care. They don't care. They 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 believe that is is not is nothing. So once you don't give value to something, why will you love it? Why will you care for it? 
Jesus, uh, God sent Jesus Christ to the world because he cared for us. <laughs> God cared for us. That is why he sent his only begotten son. So the moment you want to love, you must care. Uh, you must care because if you have a, a, like two children now and you are in a marriage, you be, because of um, finances, because of um, uh, conflict in finances and all those things, you now, because of the finances, you don't want to agree. You don't want to, you, you don't want to, you don't want to listen. You don't want to uh, uh, hear from other, other parts. You want to go, you want to leave. Because of that, you don't care for, you have children. You don't care the life, the, the life of your children that two of you um, um, building these children will make them to become worthwhile in the society. We, 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 um, you'll be able to grow the good. You don't think about that. Or because of, um, finances you hop out so that is how it is because once, once you love you'll be able to care you'll be able to think put yourself in the shoe of others that oh this uh, relationship uh, 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 am i am i doing good my my wife is not happy with me am i what is the area that i'm supposed to do good so that he can be happy because the marriage itself is like um the way god said it you you are one so once you see two of you, the, the two of you, both of you are joined together and become one, you will be looking at the interests of the other, other person. You will not be selfish. You will not be doing things that will not be pleasing to your wife. So that is where the care and love is um, supposed to stand. So the moment you have this in mind, you see that the relationship will be good. You will be, when your wife is um, angry, when it's not happy, you will be looking forward what is making her not to be happy. Where, what am I doing that is wrong? And when your wife is happy, you will be happy as well. Yes. And that is yes. because I see love is something that gives joy. It's something that gives happiness. Well, like giving, when you give, you'll be happy that you give. Your mind will be satisfied. But yes. even when, you see, when we are talking of charisma, that is, there, there are some qualities. Even when you have all those qualities and uh, you, uh, you don't have that complete qualities, most times it becomes like a um, um, hypocrisy. You are doing, people see you from outside. But yeah. inside, you are not really what yeah. you are doing. So yeah. that, that yeah. is where the charisma, charisma is like good qualities. But character-wise, inside, you are not really who you are portraying to be. So by and large, um, when we say we love, we love another name for love is care. You have yeah. to care. Yeah. Uh, is he happy? Is yeah. he angry? Is he, Am I the one causing the happiness? If I'm the one, how can I resolve this? How can I make her happy? So love is too tough. Love is really total. So Amen. when we are talking about love, we, we got to talk about care, caring. Amen. Caring is Amen. very, very important. Amen. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Thank you very much, Brad Chiefs. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. I think it's, uh, it, uh, that's, that should sums it up. Because if you care, um, it doesn't matter what the case may be. We, we express the caring attitude to our, to our partner. We, we find a way to show that we love our partner, regardless of whatever the case may be. And um, I pray that God will put that genuine care in our heart and uh, help us to love one another as Christ loved the church because of this care. That's why he was able to go to cross and uh, die for our sin and take us away from the, from the damnation of the world and give us the, the eternal life. And may the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us share the grace today. Uh, sorry for the Amen. three minutes over our time. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the and the grace of our Lord Jesus fellowship Christ, of the Holy the Spirit, of God, and be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall, shall follow us all the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you, be gracious to you, and grant you peace all around. Please share love, share love. There is nothing than giving love. When you give it, I can guarantee you, it will come back to you in multiple fold. Because when you build your relationship loving God first, you will be able to love others. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Have a good, wonderful day. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.